Today, uh, I represent Inmobi, which is the company I founded and uh, grown for a while. Um, and we're going to talk about how media is going undergoing a change because of technology. And, and, and as, as media planners and as people in the media space, as you look at this whole ecosystem, how important and the importance of technology in, in the evolution of media in the next uh, one to five years. Um, just to tell you, uh, you know, a bit about the company that I re represent so that you guys have a sense of where I'm coming from on this. Um, Inmobi is, the, is, is a mobile ad network, and we are the world's second largest ad network, um, and we are the largest independent ad network after Google. We, we do business in about 115 countries. We reach to about 200 million users every month uniquely. We, uh, we have over 200 people that work for us. Um, we have six offices across the world, which means that we are present in literally every continent. <clears throat> and that's, that's one of the key facets of, uh, of mobile, because mo mobile as an as a entity has a far outreaching and global uh, it, it has a far global outreach. And obviously, I will try and touch upon a lot about Asia and a lot on India uh, because we are in this region. But our, the amount of ads that we serve and the amount of regions and the users that we touch upon gives us significant insight on what's happening across the world. So as you can see here, we serve, uh, last month, we served close to 27 billion ads to 200 million users. We analyzed several petabytes of data in order to get insights that I'll try and share with you guys uh, over the next um, you know, few minutes. There are, there are three key important things that I want to talk about. I could actually, because it's mobile, I could talk about a dozen things. But I actually want to touch upon three key things. First, uh, as marketers, it's very important to understand that mobile is just not an extension of the PC. It has its own life. Second, the reach is extremely important, and we'll talk about reach on, on mobile. Not only what, what's the status of reach today, but where it's going to be in the next uh, two to four years. And third, how one could leverage technology to really understand your, as a media planner, by the way, how you could leverage technology to really understand who your true consumer is. Because today, a lot of us have a belief on who our true consumer is, but probably don't even know who our true consumers, consumer is. So let me dive into the fact that why mobile is different and why mobile is just not an extension of PC. So here is, here is, an, here is a research that we did across the globe with about 20,000 um, know, users of mobile internet. And what we, what we found out, and, and, and this data that I'm presenting right now is more, of, more about the Asian users, is the fact that on mobile, how users, on point number one, how users are very, have a high degree of ease of having multiple different call to actions. So if you look at this, on mobile, the call to actions are, you know, you can simply make a call. You can get some kind of virality into this whole, whole system using social media. And, you know, Rajiv is going to talk a lot more about social media as we go along. Uh, you can have a lot of content that people are willing to uh, look at. And there is an intent to purchase and intent to search. Let me compare this to PC. On PC, the only two call to actions that really work and exist at mass are the last two, which is per intent to purchase and intent to search. And that's exactly why mobile starts to differ. So if you look at this, the first three are the more dominant call to actions, especially in Asia. And that's why it starts to differ from where PC is and what mobile can do. And that's a critical factor as one needs to look at you know, media planning and, and you know, leveraging mobile as a medium. Let me dive into a little more detail in this. Let's, we also looked at data only for India. And here is the interesting fact. In India, 
Most of the trends remain pretty, pretty much similar, except the intent to purchase. The intent to purchase in India is significantly higher than many other countries. Why is that? Primarily because we don't have, as India, we don't have a lot of other avenues to do purchases. So the intent to purchase on mobile is much, much higher. In fact, the intent to make calls is also very high. If you only looked at trying to do a very high content and, and purchase and search, it might not be the right way to you know, look at mobile and do your campaigns. We then dived into looking at this, the whole place from a different, you know, brand perspective, uh, different brand or segment perspective. So if you look at this, the hotel segment, you know, we did a lot of campaigns with them. They have a very high call to action, uh, which is click to call. If you look at the movie release segment, they have a very different uh, call to actions that really work for them. The virality and the content. If you think about this, the mobile, uh, the, the, the movie segments will be very high on what's the content of the movie and what, what people are talking about the movie. Look at consumer electronics. There is a very high intent to purchase. Look at the content and make a call to get, get that product. And again, if you look at automotive, there is a very high click to call and click to essentially tell users what they're working on. Now, if you, what's the meta level output of this? That every segment has a very definitive call to action that defines the output for that segment. And that's critical because it is a very, it's a very segment-based campaign design that one needs to do. If you only end up trying to do content, which is a lot of what and ends up happening, your results will, won't be what, you know, what it actually should be. So the point being, the larger point being that mobile is not PC. It's a, it's, it has its own life. It has its own uh, you know, personality. And one needs to le really leverage those components. And data, by the way, suggests that. You know, we can talk, talk about it a lot of times, but data is necessarily suggesting that there is a significant difference uh, in how PC and mobile are behaving differently. And if, if one needs to essentially leverage mobile, it has, they have to leverage multiple call, calls of action. Let's talk about second point, reach. You know, we know that in the world today, especially in Asia, the, the number of subscribers that exist <clears throat> are very, very high. I don't think this is a surprise to anybody. You know, you have India and China at close to 60 70%. Uh, you have many other countries above 70%. So the, the total number of users on mobile are very high. Let's look at India. By the way, those number of users, our data suggests that in India, specific, only in India, we reach to anywhere close to 40 to 50 million users every month on mobile internet. Another interesting fact, if you actually look at mobile internet in India, you'll realize that the, the new players that's Aircel and uh, Docomo, have now sh have one third of the total users coming from those new uh, operators. That number 12 months ago was close to zero, was in single digit, combined number. What does that suggest? That essentially suggests that as price points for data essentially cleared up, you had a very high uptake on mobile internet uh, and those two uh, operators data against those two operators clearly suggest that if you actually try and go down the uh, the handset uh, down the handset chain you'll also see that uh, thing very clearly available on handsets that how handsets have ch have started to change and a newer set of handsets which are very internet enabled have really started to take off now if you think of mobile and if you think of you know <coughs> operators like these mobile essentially provides a very interesting uh, opportunity for operators. No other medium today, by the way, operators as a segment of total advertising is one of the largest segments in the country and across the world. No other medium actually allows, especially with the mobile uh, number portability and 3G coming in, no other medium actually allows for an, op for an operator to really target the user on different operator to move them to their own, uh, to their own network. So if there is a, and you know, if, uh, Tata, Docomo, and Aircel are aggressive operators. They can actually very easily target using mobile internet users on 
uh, Vodafone or Airtel and move them on their network. No other medium can actually allow that in a very, very targeted way. So there are a number of different opportunities that that allows. Android and iPhone. This is, this is an Asia-specific study, and the reason I use, I, I use Asia here, because Asia will essentially indicate where India is also headed. Now, if you see here, Android is starting to take off, and it's moving very, very fast. The growth on Android is so much faster than the growth of iPhone in Asia that over the next one to two years, it's, and it's, it's not a, you know, it's not a grace, it's not a, you know, mind-boggling stat, but Android is going to take off, and Android is going to be the majority operating system across this market. And if you are essential, and that's being shown on data today. And if that's going to happen, the the ability for media, the advertisers to create very engaging campaigns and results will actually also go up. And it's, again, it's being shown by data. Let's look at how users in across Asia are looking at. Uh, are embracing mobile advertising. If you look at the first two bars, which are the green bars, it basically suggests that across Asia, users are either very comfortable or comfortable seeing ads on mobile. That's about 70% of, of users. 70% of users who are actually not necessarily that used to seeing ads on PC. And that's about six percentage point higher versus users in US. And that's the advantage. That's the advantage. That's the advantage to brand and media today to essentially go after because consumers are more receptive to ads in Asia than anywhere else. If you actually go deeper on that, what you'll, what you'll find is that <clears throat> India ranks among the top three countries in the world of the 14 countries, frankly, that we studied, and those will be one of the, you know, are, are part of the top bracket are one of the top three countries in the world that are embracing mobile. The users are embracing mobile. And it's significantly higher than, uh, than, than what users are actually taking in other parts of the world, and especially U.S. The reason why U.S. is important to look at because U.S. drives significant ad dollars. And if that's the user metric there, and if our user metric in India and Asia is stronger, we you know, what's going to come is for us to understand. And data is actually suggesting that quite openly. So from a reach perspective, as I said, in India, we reached to about 40, 50 million users. Across Asia, we reached to about, you know, 100 million users. It's us who reached to that segment. But if you think of the total population that exists that uses mobile internet, that's a significantly large population. It's expected that across Asia, you'll at least have close to a billion users having, using mobile internet in about 12 to 18 months from now. If you have a billion users having, using mobile internet in a, year, in a year to 18 months from now, there is no way that a campaign or anybody who's looking at distribution can ignore mobile, can ignore mobile internet. And today, on top of it, users are willing to take that advertising. And that's important, because if users are accepting that advertising, we should go, go out for it. Let's look at how, you, how technology helps us extend our reach and extend uh, our target user. So we did a campaign. We did a campaign for Salto Alto shoes. And that was to promote this Salto Alto brand among women. And it's a very, very high premium end uh, shoe brand. And this campaign was done in certain parts of Asia. So the, the results are very Asia-specific. And the campaign was targeted to begin with between 25 and 44 aged women who were expected to be affluent and into fashion. That was the targeting. And as InMobi ran those campaigns on those targeting, there is a solution that we have which we basically allow for a certain amount of media spend to go and test out the users which are not part of your targeting, just to let you know whether your targeting, which is your perception of who your user is, is accurate or not. What does targeting mean? Targeting means that I know my user. What we are trying to show is many times you don't know your user. You believe that you know your user. And we can help you discover your users. Technology can help you discover those users in a far more uh, 
you know, analytical manner. So here's the results. So the targeted buy was, as I said, between 25 and 44 women, high-end devices. That's what we targeted. That was our target, high-end devices, go, go for those. There was no media spillage as you do the targeted buy. And the result, as, and, and along with that, so that basically gave you 10% of the clicks. Of the total number of users that went onto that site, there were 10% of those were from that segment that you ended up targeting. Then there was a broad-based segment that we basically went and tested, and the system essentially analyzed whether, you know, are the users somewhere outside of that. And that, using our post-click analytics, suggested that the users outside of that core user group essentially had a much, much higher affinity for that brand and engagement with that brand. This study was used by that brand to essentially change its own you know, targeting, change its own media planning, and its understanding of its users. And that's what technology does in mobile. Because of the ability to essentially target users to precision, target users at scale, it allows you to discover your own users in a very different manner. And this is what, this is what it is. You can target your users using hyper-targeting, but if you allow the technology to help you discover your users, and that's the beauty of it, everybody can try and give you the exact user that you want, but if you use the technology rightly, you can actually discover new users. And that's essentially what ended up happening here. So again, we, we look at targeting as a guideline, as a principle that you have given us. But we try and extract higher value out of that using our technology and using the technology that is being developed. That's the power of mobile because of a you know, number of different factors like location, handsets, user profile, social media, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And that's essentially why we believe that media is starting to change because of technology. Who's been watching the India-South Africa series? I'm sure most of you all have been watching. Yeah? Have you all seen this new hippo ad that's come out? where it's some, some food or some wafers or something where someone's singing Mary Ma, Mary Ma, Mary Ma. Not a bad ad, but the only problem is every time a wicket falls, every time a four is hit, that same bloody Ma hippo comes in the middle of the screen next to the stumps and there's a hippo floating around over there. And it says, to find us, find us on Twitter, find us on Facebook. I don't want to find them, I want to shoot the bloody hippo. It's the worst ad. You cannot irritate someone while watching a cricket match, especially when India is one run away from winning. My presentation today is about social media and brands in the mobile web environment. A couple of slides are pretty similar to what Naveen already mentioned, so I'm just going to skip by them. Why mobile social networking? I think it's pretty evident to most of you all. But it's actually it's a shift in brand thinking. Smartphones, most of us have smartphones right now, larger screen size, better web browsing capabilities, branded widgets and applications on mobile social networking sites, blogs, reviews, comments, viral feedback. This did not exist two to three to four years ago. It all exists now because of the entire craze that we have, which is social media networking where brands can actually get feedback in real time about what is good about their brand, about the brand manager can actually find out what is good about their product, what is banned about their product, how they can improve it in real time, research, analysis, awareness, studies can come back immediately. It's a great tool. How are mobile phones chasing, changing social media? Uh, something from Comscore. Uh, 22, my God, I'm losing my eyesight here. 22.5% in 2009, in Jan 2009, smartphone users accessed mobile browsers and accessed social networking sites. Current Jan 2010, sorry, about a year ago, Jan 2010, it is 30.8%. It's gone up by about 8 or 9%. On other phones, it is 4.5% and 7% respectively. And on all mobile phones, it is 6.5 and 11.1% respectively showing us the growth in access of social networking sites by consumers who own smartphones. How are people using social media on their mobile devices? Some interesting numbers here. Browsing social networking sites, we already know that number is fairly high. It's about 
62% sending and receive and instant messages, 62%. We know that. But the interesting parts over here are the 35% and 34%. And the 33%. Comment on social networking sites, 35%. 33% respectively for post photos and forwarding items. Great viral marketing tools for brands on the mobile internet. To forward good comments about the product, these are all brand ambassadors. Every brand has brand ambassadors. Not that they've paid them, but there are people who've tried out the product, who like what they have consumed about the product, and they can actually forward these viral messages to their friends, families, peers, and everyone else in the network. We all know this. I mean, everyone, I'm sure a lot of people have seen the movie. We've got more than 200 million people right now accessing Facebook on their mobile. Uh, 2.6 billion page views viewed every month on Facebook. On all the Google sites put together, that number is 894 million. Huge numbers, huge opportunities in the social networking environment for brands and advertisers. How do consumers use social media? Some of the slides I've showed you till now are just setting it up for some case studies and showing you how brands can allocate money within the different stages of adoption and integration in social media. What is the vast economy in the mobile ecosystem? Music, apps, shopping, LBS, which is location-based services, reward points, dating, which is on internet, SMS, or on voice, and social gaming. This is what the mobile internet and social networking comprises of in today's vast economy. How is social media influencing purchase? We have the customer who's at the core. Then we have the traditional channels out there, which are regular channels of advertising. You have media below the line, above the line. But the outside piece, the dark blue, is the one that is going to grow the most. It's pretty obvious because of some of the previous slides I've showed you. It is transparent. It is conversational. And that is what a good brand manager or a good marketing manager wants to know. Get instant conversation, get instant feedback about the product, wants to hear peer reviews, wants to hear expert opinions. And expert opinions not necessarily about people who are your traditional experts who've been around for five, six, seven years. These are expert opinions from consumers who've tried out your product in a research and analysis testing project or who have tried out your project, a product over the last three, four weeks regularly and have reverted back with feedback about your product or what you can do about your packaging or what you can do about the campaign you're running, what they like, what they don't like. It is this outside blue ring or circle that is going to grow the most. How do you optimize the success of social media on mobile? You can make content mobile accessible, simple. Ensure that any digital content produced is accessible by all mainstream mobile devices. Not only your smartphones. I know a question that's going to come back to me after this or during the presentation. India, smartphones, how many people can afford it? Right, but now you have your 1,500 and 1,800 rupee phones that are GPRS enabled, that are color phones, that are accessible, that will be accessible in most parts of the smaller towns in rural India, which can access social networking sites. And it's being done currently. Optimize your e-newsletters, e share content through groups, Twitter, and your community sites. Create your own branded community site, not only for Facebook, for even other social network. Create it on YouTube. Post videos of your product. Post your ads on YouTube. Create anything on any of the social networking sites, but you must utilize that effectively and wherever possible. Consider an application. I mean, selectively, of course. Develop an application for your customers so they can manage their own accounts and orders. When I'm talking about orders, of course, I'm talking about customers or clients that have a retail arm or have purchase and sale on the internet, on the mobile internet. Always encourage interactivity at events. Offer SMS short codes, inviting prospects to text for more information or even quick response codes. We've... This is, a so, this is a slide, interesting slide I pulled out from uh, a Nielsen Facebook study that was conducted in April 2010 out of 800,000 Facebook users that actually categorized ad recall 
on home page, which is about 10%. But when ads mention friends who are fans, the ad recall for that brand went up to 16%. Next, when ads coincide with mention of friends who are fans in the timeline, you know that verb that comes up on the top right that says these many people are fans of this product in the last one minute or in the last 24 hours, ad recall for that product went up to 30%. For brand awareness, if you use the same parameters, the numbers are 4% if it's a home page, basic home page ad. When ads mention friends who are fans on Facebook, the brand awareness went up to 8% and then 13% within a certain timeline. Intent to purchase, of course the numbers are much lower, but ultimately it's a funnel. You're talking about 2%, 8%, and 8% again. How much should brands budget for social media? I mean, that's something we're always breaking our heads against. My company, Altruist Mobile to Win, I mean, we're in front of clients every day trying to convince them that, hey, you need to spend on SMS, then you need to spend on mobile internet, you need to create a website, create a banded mobile game, and ultimately get into social media. That's the value chain. That is how the value chain moves from new people who are coming onto the mobile to SMS to mobile internet and social networking. There are many brand managers and there are many people in companies who are purely only experimenting with social media because it will give them a tick mark at the end of the year, which is fine, which is fair. But at least they're experimenting with it. There are many senior level people within companies who are experimenting with social media because it looks, makes them look good with the junior people in the company. So they're with it, with the with it crowd. The point is that everyone is willing to experiment. Right, so the first year or two, so you have your social media experiments on mobile internet for brands. First year or two of unconnected social media programming just involves basic blogging, video content distribution like on YouTube, UGC content, contests, and other tactics. Adoption and integration after a couple of years, and the value of success of social media is felt with within and there is a push to do more and integrate it with more people and disciplines. Go big, either with a big campaign or a more impactful integration, like committing an X number of people in customer care and customer, customer uh, or in, call, in your call center, if there's a brand that has a call center. Because ultimately, any social media networking brand campaign is going to have a lot of people calling in, a lot of people emailing in, and asking questions about the brand or the product, apart from whatever comments they pass in. So you need to have the capability in-house and within to address those concerns and comments. A spend matrix, a total spend in a single market from a prototypical 10 million B2C Marcom budget. Also, this is, I mean, I haven't put the source here. This is Nielsen. Uh, stage one, which I showed you, is the obligation where they have to do, which is the experimental part. It's about... And the experimentation is 1%. In the quest, 5%. Well integrated, in experimental stage, there is no well integrated campaign. Right? In the adoption part, which is what I just explained over here in the following years, obligation percentage of a typical budget is about 4 to 5%. Quest is about 7 to 8%. And a well integrated campaign is approximately, on an average, about 10%. Go big. Once it's established and you have an internal team that is addressing and that you have an internal team to take care of requests and complain, complaints or any concerns or comments from people, it is 7%, 10%, and 15% respectively. What is a must for social media and mobile internet for a brand? Think engagement. You must engage with your brand. There are enough campaigns out there, there are enough marketers out there who are just running short promotions for the sake of it, and they are not engaging with their customer. You must engage with them. They are not idiots. They are the ones who make your brand. Ultimately, they are the ones who are actually paying your salaries. Social media is not about buzz. It's about getting feedback. It's about getting comments. It's about making a product better. It's not only about the initial PR buzz that you're doing for the first one, one and a half months. It's a long-term, long-drawn-out cycle over a couple of years. Offer content that matters, build conversations around it. I mean, build content, make content around your product, and get people to comment on the content. Even if it is bad comments, you can tailor-make it. You, you, you can at least change it around later, but at least get people talking about it. Find your evangelists. 
These are not paid evangelists, of course. They're not people on your, on your salary uh, or who you're on your PNL account. But these are people who are liking your product, who've enjoyed or tasted your product, and will talk about your product. Right? Find them, cultivate them. Marry the web and mobile. I'll show you an example a bit later in one of my case studies how the web and mobile is effectively uh, comes together, but always, I mean, mobile, as you'll have all heard over the last couple of days and for the last couple of years, don't do it as a standalone medium. Please integrate it with your other activities, which is on print, which is on television, radio, and also especially the internet. And we're talking social media and mobile internet here. Of course, it needs to be on the internet as well. Build your special touch points into mainstream ads and marketing. Give a call for action, always. Don't just leave a banner there or a mention there and leave it blank and no next stage. Take it to the next stage. Get people to comment back to you or actually get people to consume your product. Accompany your customers. Also, I'll show you a case study where if we've heard of some of these social networking sites such as Goala, Foursquare, MyTown. These are all social networking sites where people check in. Check in when they go into a physical location especially like retailers, especially like Starbucks, especially like what Pepe Jeans is going to start doing over here in India, where you actually go into a physical location, check in, or you go into a lifestyle store, check in, your friends and family know that you walked into a certain place, and once you check in, you get points. You get more points, you get more and more rewards, which you can then redeem for later products. A great brand loyalty program. Communities always belong to users. Please do not take the community. Please do not take whatever is being written in that social networking site about your product away from them, even if it's bad. It'll come back and hit you in your face really badly. Uh, quickly going to some uh, case studies a company has created. Uh, we created a car racing game for, uh, face for uh, Seat, replicated it online, replicated it on Facebook, and therefore got all these elements together. So it is a mobile game and a 2D online game. There was Facebook page integration. There was a Flash game also created. And there were about 50,000 downloads within 20 days of the launch of the game. So anytime you play the game on your mobile phone, you can upload the score. There's a leaderboard, scoreboard. And also you can go online onto Facebook and you can play the same game. Every time the game, someone plays a game, the points are updated in both areas. And the highest score is actually shown on Facebook. On the left is the home screen, of home, home screen of the game, and on the right is, of course, how it was shown on Facebook. And the points were mentioned on the right. Comments, score and status updates on Facebook wall, online and mobile game. So, of course, you have a person's photograph who's played the game last, and it says, comment, I like the game, I didn't like the game, I got these many points comments on how to play the game better. Very interesting, very informative, very involved, very viral. These are the three or four most important aspects in social networking in the mobile internet. Uh, tax calculator, this is pretty basic. I mean, every brand can do this. Created a tax calculator application for Bajaj just about a month ago. Insurance, investment, Tax saving season is around now, which March, March 31st around the corner here in India. And we created an application, and it was users downloading the application had a Facebook status update stating, I have downloaded the Bajaj Alliance tax calculator and saved 41,000 rupees. Just click on it to benefit as well. The link asked the Facebook user to enter the mobile number. An SMS was pushed to the number, and it's a viral element that's been closed out. Obviously, if you see a message like that on Facebook, that I have saved this much money, do you want to benefit as well? Who in their right mind would not? I mean, it's just a 30-second process. Uh, I'll jump past some of these. What Mazda did, uh, goal was to expand the reach of the brand and also instill a sense of brand loyalty. And uh, what they did was uh, use a combination of search, social media, and marketing dashboard tech with additional tools to create a solution. A Mazda Facebook page was also created. There were about 40,000 unique visitors who completed more than 38,000 performance actions, including dealer locator and keep me updated opt-in areas of the site. Titan created a page on Facebook with some, and everyone was asked once they bought 
uh, these sunglasses to comment about how cool these were, how sexy these were, how great these new range of glass sunglasses were, and whoever had the maximum comments, which were rated by points from other people, they got some freebies from Titan. Book my show on Twitter. This is very interesting because uh, this is an example of people actually sending their Twitter updates about the type of movie, about the movie tickets they bought for a certain movie that's launched. It can be hijacked. This can be hijacked because the producer, I'm not saying it was done, but the producers of the show or the distributors, whoever the, whoever's made the movie, can actually hire 50 people, and all 50 people can say, oh, all of us have bought five tickets for this movie. You're going to have 500 people automatically go and watch a rubbish movie. Can be, need to be careful. Interesting one, location-based services, where I showed you an example of marry the web and mobile and also follow your customer. The iPhone app lets customers know when they are near a pop spot or a Pepsi spot. Consumers go and buy a Pepsi. Every time they buy a Pepsi, they get reward points that can be redeemed for music downloads. Each point gets you one reward, and that gives you one download from the library or the music store. Foursquare, the social location internet site, was roped in. So every time people checked in to a pop spot or a Pepsi outlet, got points from there, as well as purchasing a Pepsi. And therefore, this was redeemed at the end of the month. And it is a great, very, it's still continuing. It's a very successful campaign. It's been one of the most successful Foursquare campaigns right now that's been conducted. I'm not sure if it's Europe, but it's in the US right now. Um, I'll rush through this. There's some uh, very successful companies that have made social media a part of the mainstream media, and very large budgets have been put down. I mean, that includes Starbucks, that includes Coke, Oreo cookies. Um, Oreo has ranked up 12 million likes on Facebook, and it's a great way to prove that good products, which have good comments made for them, have great staying power. Uh, Red Bull, with 10 million likes on Facebook, offers a really cool and interactive Facebook page that appeals to their consumers. And it, the app has been made for iPhone, iPod Touch, and iPad. I'm sure it must be uh, available for uh, Symbian and uh, Android as well. Last slide here. Mobile does not function in a vacuum. You must have other media accompanying it. It has to deliver value. Mega portals are definitely important and helpful as distribution channels. Otherwise, you're not going to have any people commenting on it. Users definitely want to get inspired and involved. And if they want to own the community that you've created for your brand, let them. It must be viral. Your campaigns must be viral. And if you cannot track it, just kill it. <laughs>